we actually have just got out of our first service with my church. And I do have from time to time when I'm having the local assembly both in Mexico and the United States on for a special message from it's the direction of the Lord. What we're going to do today is a little bit different than what we've done for years. I think it's time that we understand that we have been hypnotized. We have been lied to. We have been deceived. We have fallen into a trance where we don't even realize that this has happened to us. I have some scriptures lined up and I also have some things of interest that I am going to teach you. I do want to first address the Facebook comments, etc. First and foremost, I'm the prophetess of God and I answer to no man, only to God. Therefore, your comments will not probably hear, make it to my ears or to my reading. I've come to this earth as requested of God who called me to bring you out of darkness and to expose to you the lies and deception that you have been led into. I'm not here to debate your right or your wrong. And yes, for some of you, I condemn you for your actions. And when the judgment comes down from God, it is permanent. I am not God. I am a servant of Adonai. First and foremost, my allegiance is to him, no man, no woman, no particular denomination, no particular religion. My allegiance is to Kwari Pena Shakenelo. Hirene Viaduto is to him and him alone. I will make no excuse, nor will I debate. When things are wrong in God's eyes, they are wrong. I will not say I'm going to love you through it. That's what you've been taught. That's not what his word states. He expects you to align your life and do what's right according to his word. I will not make excuse nor will I give explanation. I will tell you at this point, unless you are a specific member of my church, and Sister Judith, you and Casey are two members of my church, although you don't live here, we will continue to accept the personal messages from you, but we will not accept personal messages from other people unless their attitude is to repent and ask God's forgiveness for the fact that they have done him tremendously wrong. I am here as a servant and a messenger of Adonai. Someone asked me recently, why don't I call him Jesus? Because Jesus is not God. And I believe in the Ten Commandments that we must honor one and one God only, one true God of Israel, Yahweh Adonai. We are not to honor a false deity, a make-believe or made-up deity who originally was Mithra and became Jesus and was put in by Constantine. I'm not giving you all that lesson today. I'm first going to tell you, you're wrong, you're going to hell, and you can hear me straight. And I'm not playing no games about it. You proceed and continue to live in that deception that you're in. It's your soul. Mine is secure in him. I don't need your experience, and I don't listen to your excuses. So as of this morning, all communication reaching me, pro or con, can no longer reach me. We knew this was going to happen. We prepared it for years. God had told me the direction I was to go and what I was to do. I wasn't to come forward until he said it was time. And because of that, I have stayed hidden and in the background. My position will not allow that anymore. I have a wonderful team that loves God, and I'm thankful for them. Again, you will not be able to communicate me to me through Facebook, through YouTube, or any other social media because as of now I am not the one who's going to be on it to answer those responses. From time to time I will request that my staff post certain things for me that have to do with scripture and showing you what's happening. But as far as answering on your text and your comments, I won't do it. I won't make count or give excuse or deal with your ignorance and stupidity. Many of you are very ignorant and so demonic that you would promote wickedness in your groups and never say a word against it. That shows me how spineless you are when it comes to serving God. Someone says what I am to them, be careful. And I want to admonish you be very careful. For what you speak, you're speaking against the servant of God. And what you say will bring your damnation. Watch what you say and do your research, scripturally first and historically. 
I will not and cannot proceed to baby you, pacify you. I'm opening this statement up because I am not concerned about the number of people who watch this. It doesn't bother me. If one or two come out of the darkness and the stupor that they are in, then that's the mission, to bring you out of darkness into the light. I am not under obligation to any particular denomination, though I have said on many occasions that I was fourth generation United Pentecostal. I was. I have not been United Pentecostal for at least 22 plus years. I refuse to be a part of an organization, whether it's United Pentecostal, Assemblies, Baptist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, it doesn't matter. I will not be a part of a man-man organization that brings you out of the power of God into His will and His direction. I'm blessed to have such a tremendous group of people that stand beside me. I have an amazing son that I thank God for. I have so many family members that are part of this, and I am so thankful that I have them with me and not against me. Now, before I proceed and begin to teach you this, I want you to understand this is not for everyone. You that are cold-hearted and indifferent towards God, turn it off. Make all your negative comments you want to because I declare war against the powers of hell, and I will not tolerate any longer your obstinance, your rebellion, and your disobedience to God's word. So say what you say and do what you will, but you will not stop the power of God from moving on this earth. Right. Julian, would you like to say something before we get started? You know, you might have heard that statement before when people say not to talk about certain people, not talk about them, but you have no idea who she is. You really have no idea. If you knew who she was, you would not post any comments, any, any derogatory comments, anything like that, because God, God walks with her, 100%. That's right. And she's just pointing the finger at some of you. And that, you should be scared. You should be. If you have any fear of God in you at all, you will repent right now. Those people have done that. If you have done that, post those type of comments, you need to repent. I beg of you, you need to repent. Because I've seen that. I've seen that in action when she points a finger at somebody like that. She's bringing the wrath of God against you. And God's bringing his wrath against you because you spoke against his prophet. As a prophetess of God, I'm required to give you the message straight from God. I don't need accountability to you or any man. But instead, unto him who is great and mighty, greater than you, and to him that is greater than a man can imagine. There's no man alive who deserves any praise, only him. And he is trying to bring you out of darkness into light, to open up your eyes spiritually and to lead you out of that pit that you chose to walk in with your your eyes wide open. I did not call myself to this position. He called me. That's right. So let me verify and solidify and tell you, from this day forward, I will step and be in the place that God has called me to be. I will give no explanation for what I do and how I do it. As long as God is in it, who can be against it? Who is that bold that they would come against the true servant of the living God? How dare you? I strongly admonish you, just as Brother Julian just did, that you better step back. Quit being ignorant and stupid and in your stupor and have this sort of I guess, self-righteous attitude. Your name over your door, the way you dress does not define what is in your heart. Your heart is wicked and far from God. That when I would point out to you about these holidays, you would begin your, you're supposed to love. I love you enough to tell you the truth. That's right. I love you enough to stop you down that path. I don't care if it makes you happy and your preachers in your pulpit should have loved you enough to stop it too, but they don't. They are workers of iniquity and the sin is in them to bring out to you 
I'm going to show you documentation to prove the first point. One thing you need to remember, there is one God and one God only. And beside him, there is no other. Josh, give me no other God. Don't throw on that screen, please. There is no other gods. Now, he's going to this, and I want you to keep in mind we're using two different versions. We use King James Version and New Living Testament, but he's now got this one up. And I want you to see that there are 173 times in 79 verses that the scripture tells us that we cannot have any other God before us. Newsflash, Jesus was not at the time of God. There was one and always has been one God. Only one God from the beginning of time until here. No other replacement. No other time did they fuse together. He is all sovereign and he is all powerful. And you diminished him, diminished him by making him a man. He never was a man. He was always the mighty God of the universe. Sure. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods because I rescued this people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. Now, I need your help on my team. I'm gonna have a hard time speaking this in English at times, so read and I will stop you on it. Keep the screen up for me, please, Josh. Exodus chapter 18 and 11. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods. What? He's greater than all other gods? Christmas, Santa Claus, the occult, he's greater than that. And you will offend him by erecting the stuff and making your lies of excuse that you've been deceived to accept because of your churches, because of your own personal desire to make yourself as God. I know that he is greater than all other gods. Go ahead. Because he rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. Go on. Exodus 20 and 5. You must not bow down to them or worship them. Wait a minute. You must not bow down. Your preacher's in the pulpit. He's got his Christmas. He's got his Halloween. He's got his New Year's. He's got his Easter. He's got his everything. He is a wicked man. He opposes God. He opposes everything that's like God. And you bow down to him and say, well, my pastor doesn't say anything wrong with it, but God said something was wrong with it. And you fight God, then let you be cursed as that is. And he says, you bow down to them. He worship them. Go ahead. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. He's not tolerating your worship. He's not tolerating it in your churches. You moved away from the Ten Commandments of God and you brought in the Catholic Church, swearing all the time that you were not a part of the Catholic Church. Today, I'm going to prove to you how you bowed yourself down to the Catholic Church and the Pope, and you are not violating anything except God's word by your arrogance, your disobedience, and your self-righteousness. Understand today is your day of accountability. He said you will not bow down, nor will you give your affection. Continue that sentence. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected even children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. I was brought into the same stuff you were, but you see something happened. I separated from it because I love God more than I love these things of this world. Somebody said you're fanatical. Thank you, thank you, thank you for noticing it because I am a fanatic when it comes to serving God. I believe wholeheartedly without reservation. It's you who are in the stage of indecisiveness. Now, Julian, if I get to rolling and any time you feel popping in, go right ahead. <laughs> Let's go with the next one. Exodus, Exodus 23 and 13. Pay close attention to all my instructions. You must not call on the name of any other gods. Do not even speak their names. Newsflash. Jesus is not God. He never has been. He never will be. He is a representation of a God named Mithra. Same exact story. And I'm not here to prove that today. I'm taking you straight to scripture. Jesus is not God. He never will be and he never was. You remove the king of glory off of his throne and you put on a pagan deity who is the name of Mithra or Sol Invictus. I am 
very strong about you understanding my position. I told somebody recently, no, I do not use in the name of Jesus. That is a conjuring spirit going out. And God revealed that. And I'm going to share that with you perhaps in a little bit, if I remember. Julian might have to bring me back to it. That is not calling upon the name of the Lord. God's name was so holy, so righteous, that we did not just use it and throw it down. So when I say, Adonai, Yashapri, Hanani, Adonai means my Lord. I submit unto you, my Lord. You are mine, my Adonai. Other words is also Yahweh. It is not Yeshua HaMashiach. It is not Jesus. It is Adonai, the Lord of all the universe. You are my creator. You are my life and my breath and my existence. He is not what you've been told he is. Know who God is. I know that you're feeling God across this airway. You can't tell me you're not. Do you think by five seconds that God would bring his presence in here if he was opposing me? Obviously, you don't know about God because he would not. You say, one God, only God, and his name is Adonai or Yahweh. But we could not put his righteous name upon paper. But it says, you will not speak the name of another God, but yet you call him Jesus. Come on, keep going. He is not Jesus. Keep going. That's not who he is. That's not who he's ever been. The Catholic Ecumenical Councils, and it was the Ecumenical Councils before it became the Catholic Church, knew this, and they changed the salvation for you to be destroyed. Satan always had a plan. Before I go to that one, Josh, bring me back to those scriptures. Then I'm going to go to Laodicea and show that. Go ahead, Stacy. Glance through there. Exodus 34 and 14. You must... Worship no, no other God. No other God, Julian. That means not Christmas, not Halloween, not Easter, not no other God. Easter is about the goddess at start. And Tammuz. Right. And Valentine's about Cupid and Psyche. You worship them. Right. How dare you call yourself a child of the living God? Come against me, devil, and I will stand against you forever. You have stolen as many people as you're going to stand because I am going to stand between you and those people. And you don't think I love you? I love you enough to tell you the truth. It's your ministers, your leaders. All of those people want to lie to you and deceive you. And then you wonder why God's not moving. You got a call on Facebook for somebody to answer you. He's not moving because he is not with them. Come on. Go ahead. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. Okay, Julian, can we expand on that a minute? We've been out in Half Price Books, in Barnes and Noble, and at the library. And although we have not released all the information because there's so much of it, I would think the fact that we showed how Santa Claus was wrapped up into magic and witchcraft, that you would not sit there and say, that's not why I do it. Satan has got you so fooled. You are so deceived. You make your excuses for accepting another God. Believe me, that's Sol Invictus, that's Santa Claus, that's Saint Nicholas. That was also one of those who was in the council. And I know what I'm talking about, and I don't have to prove a thing to you. That's right. Come on. You love the things of this world more than you love God. That's right. That's all you care about. Not happening. It's all you care about. Do you understand me? You have sold out, and God is not with you. The power of God is not that's with right. you. Yeah, yeah, that's his power is with me because I submit my way to him. Big difference. Your churches don't have this in it. They're praying for somebody to move in there. Get your preachers and get on their face before God. Or walk out of that assembly. That's right. Get out of that house that's burning. The one that's sending you to hell. You look at all of these leaders, and I'm going to call out David Foss in Texas. Your house is elaborately decorated with all the things of hell and you know it i'm going to bring up in a few minutes how Ar jeff arnold is involved in magic and witchcraft and your leadership knew it i'm going to bring that out because i'm going to provide clips but i also want you to know i personally reached out to jeff arnold right. and i showed him scripturally where he was sinning against god right. i showed him that i sit with him my stuff a book for him to see that he was involved in it and that was before his recent releases of more of his magic and witchcraft. And you want to say, yeah, be careful not to speak against the ministers of God. I'd love to meet a minister of God. Right. That's right. I would love to meet a woman of God. 
all these people that you elevated to their exalted position and took God out, you enjoyed your fellowship, your fashion shows, your haughty, arrogant spirits. I made the statement. We took Acts 2.38 and based an entire doctrine of how to control people off of one sentence. But I'm showing you scripture after scripture where no other God is to be in your life. And what do you do? You accept the other gods. Right. When I had this service for my church prior to coming online, I told my church, we get right with God right now or you're not going to be in the sanctuary. You're not going to be in this group. I will separate myself in a heartbeat because God showed me that we must make changes now. It was not for your benefit that I called this church unto repentance and I was able to go before the Lord and provide the sacrifice. They say, pray the sacrifice. Come on, Julie, you're going to have to help me. I'm trying hard times to keep in English. To pray the forgiveness of this church unto the mighty God. That's right. And he did. Amen. So what you're seeing is our secondary service in one sense. Right. It's the one for you, not the one that's for my actual church members. I want to go back to how you have held them in high esteem. Go on, Stacy, and read for me. You must not bow down to them or worship them. Deuteronomy 5 and 9. You must not bow down. Must not. Can't do it. To them or worship them. But you don't understand I'm loving them to God. That's the biggest lie the devil ever told. I don't see a one of you getting any closer to God, and I don't see the rooms, the prayer rooms filled up. Do you? Right. When was the last time you saw your pastor on his face, his wife on her face, weeping out for the congregation? Because if they were, they would have come to the conclusion I did some 20 something years ago that I had been lied to by an establishment right. and that we were not supposed to keep Sunday as our day of worship. Right. Again, we're going to bring that to you. Continue with this, not bow down or worship them. When that preacher says something, you bow down and worship them. And then they tell you not to speak against them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. Won't tolerate it. Now you want to tell me we're supposed to win them with love? Let me tell you something. We get too negligent on the way that we act. You're going to let that person and be involved in that and they're going to go to hell and you're going to tell me you love them all the way to hell so they could join you? Sure. Is that what you're doing? If you love somebody, you stand up to them. That's wrong with parenting today. They don't want to stand up and tell their child that's enough. Sit down. Behave yourself. They want to let them express themselves and run around like crazy demons that they are because you're feeling full of chocolate and garbage and they get all caffeined up and, and all the stuff that they're doing and you will not tell them to sit down because you fed the, the destroyer into their, their system. That's right. Huh, okay. Go to 11 and 16. Be careful. Do not let your heart be deceived so that you turn away from the Lord and serve and worship other gods. Hear it, hear it, hear it. Be not, be careful. Don't let your heart be deceived. That you what, turn away from the Lord and serve other gods? Oh, but you know, Easter is about Jesus' resurrection. Hey, newsflash, there wasn't a Jesus. That wasn't what that was about. It was about Tammuz in the Old Testament. Newsflash, you worship the wrong God. Newsflash. That's not what Christmas is about. You're worshiping the wrong God. So Invictus, newsflash, you're worshiping the wrong God. Right. Newsflash, you've been in a hypnotic stage and you never wanted to say anything, though at times you might have felt it in your heart. That's you right. couldn't stand up because all of those around you had embraced the lie. Go ahead, Julian. You're worshiping your, your pastors. You That's worship right. them. You bow before them. You acknowledge them as a deity. But yet, when the prophet of God brings you the word, you won't accept it. That's right. Because that's how you deceive. That's what the scripture is for you. You've been that deceived that you cannot see it. When she calls out Jeff Arnold for doing his magic, and you defend that, you have the audacity to defend that? What's your heart? What's your mind? It's been held captive. It's been held captive by Satan. And you don't even see it. And as long as you continue to pay for it, he's going to continue to believe that lie. He knows in his statements that they are witchcraft. 
He's been told, but did that stopping? No, because it's good entertainment. There was a message that last one I read, and it wasn't lengthy before I said, no more will I listen or read to this. I have not read all of the comments, but this one fell to my eyes. And Stacy, I think you might have got a picture of it or is it over here on my phone, wherever it's, it's at. On your phone. Okay, pass this over to Stacy. And I want you to pull that comment up. You say, well, I love Jeff Arnold. I can't stand the man. I'm held accountable for what I lead people unto. Sure. Jeff Arnold is leading them to hell and jokes about it. I don't care if he's got 14,000 followers and I have four. I walk with him. That's right. You see, there's a big difference. If he can laugh over that, then think about it. And Josh, I know this is not in the six significance, but I am gonna pop on over to the Jeff Arnold statements and the deception and magic and witchcraft. But wait a second, I'll tell you when. Read, Stacy, the statement that was made. You want me to stop from what you said and then her? Yeah, it doesn't matter, you can. Not too long ago, I was in church and it was the close of vacation Bible school. So they had visit, they had the visiting vacation Bible school preacher, so-called, to take over the Sunday service and show the church what the kids have been doing all week. This man had the girls and boys doing dances that were where they touched their knees and spread their legs. He had a ventriloquist doll that joked about how fat he was and was openly flirting with the little girls as if it was funny. We had a little girl visiting who actually got scared watching and she was 11 years old. It was straight up the spirit of pedophilia and nobody called it out. I am still appalled just thinking about it because this man travels from church to church doing this. You hear what she said? Your preachers allowed it. They're paying him to pollute your congregations. You hear what I'm telling you? And you can't see it? Of course not, because you are in a zombie state of mind. Now, was there another part after that, Stacey, that I, I told you to read? Look a little bit below it. Uh, one lady said, yes, I agree with you 100%. I've seen this. My grandpa preached against all magic tricks and playing cards. I love brother, uh, brother Arnold, but I don't agree with anything he do with magic or sorcery. The Bible says to abstain from all evil, from even the appearance of evil. Magic is the appearance of sorcery. Disney has normalized and desensitized people in regards to magic in several generations. Have you thought about this? Magic and witchcraft control your pulpit. And instead of getting up in your service and walking out and refusing to come back, you just say, I love Brother Arnold. Well, you're going to love him that way. Are you going to go to him and say, I love you enough to be honest with you? I loved him enough to send him a letter. I loved him enough to send him material. And when he did not receive it, I stepped back. Let him be destroyed by his own wickedness. You see, the part that's the most troubling is that the leadership of the United Pentecostal Church had him seek, speak at Because of the Times and other great events, knowing that he was involved in this. And he says it in his own message. Someone says, you can't accuse a man. No, his own words condemn him. Right. He's right there on YouTube doing exactly what I'm telling you he was doing. And you refuse to walk out the door. So now, we're kind of skipping around. And I'm going to have you, Josh, go ahead and bring that to Jeff Arnold and the clips that we took off of the YouTube. And then we're going to go into deception, witchcraft, and what happens. So Josh is preparing the screens. Can they even hear that? It's, it's on the X is on the sound. Go back to the bottom of the screen. You see where the, the mic is turned off. Did we check the audio before we did this? Okay, well that's, that's too quick. You can't get the picture of it. Okay, 
So since they didn't put this up on the screen right for me, I want you to read the bottom line. Just talking about he does hocus pocus and he starts doing his magic tricks. And then he shows how he does this. And he says he learned this years ago in jail. He taught a bunch of magicians. Now, he is his own witness against himself. I don't know if you can hear the sound on your side. I can't on this side. What do you love about this man who defies God and his word? Yeah, at that point, he's talking about magic words. Does he, can they hear him? Mm -hmm. Not for some reason. Read the subtitles. This was in a church service where he was at when he's doing this one. Now tell me how you love him more than you love God. Tell me. When they got the wreath in the back. You got the Christmas wreath, which indicates Christmas. He honors that. The poinsettias. This man is deceptive. He's wicked. But he fellowships with the same spirits. And I hope that you guys will fix this audio. I have no idea why it's not coming up. But I can reassure you I will have them fix it. And then bring it back to you because I don't want you to watch all of the clips that he has done to promote his wicked behavior. So cut the man. Go back to magic, witchcraft. Magic. The use of means such as charms or spells believed to have supernatural powers over natural forces. Magic rites or incantations. Number two, an extraordinary power of influence, seemingly from a supernatural source. Children believe that all of this is happening. Whether it's happening or not is irrelevant. The fact that you're promoting it is what the problem is. Something that seems to cast a spell or enchantment. The art of producing illusions by sleight of hand. Is that not what he did? Did he not produce illusions by sleight of hand? This man is wicked. And your organization, if you're UPCI, promote him and support him. And he's a member of that. And never once did those boards bring him a court of, in front of him and address the magic because they're just as guilty. Mm -hmm. Their witchcraft, their magic comes in their, all their holidays where they make their money. They're just as guilty please go to with me uh, julian have you got something you want to share vocabulary.com defines it as a magician as someone who performs magic tricks to amuse an audience but look at the cinnamon cinnamons conjurer two one who practices magic or sorcery necromancer sorcerer that's what he is a necromancer calling to the dead, a sorcerer, a divination. All of these are witchcraft, but your pastor do it to you every Sunday. Sorry. Every Sunday, you walk in to a house of witchcraft and you accept their incantations and you bow your knee to a pagan god. Well, should I go ahead and take it to him and let him see it? I don't know if I'm in time frame or not, but I'm going to say it doesn't oh, matter. Just keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> my back staff saying, keep it going. Bring it to, take me to uh, the first commandment. We say no other gods. And then I'm going to do with the Sabbath. So that's in the no other gods. The first commandment tells us that we cannot have any other gods before us. And that's also in King James. And Josh, I think you have the King James available there on the screen. If not, he will get it in case you need to have the other version. Just type in no other gods if it doesn't pop up. Exodus 23 and 3, the first commandment, which is above all commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. With no disrespect, I hope you realize, I say disrespect to God, I don't care whether it's respectful to you or not. But to God, that there was not another name on that line. Do you see one? So I loved what my personal assistant said to me yesterday. She said, just where was Jesus whenever God brought them out of bondage? Where was he when they were in captivity? 
Where was he when they came across on dry land? Where was he when the manna was fed and the water was given and the miracles took place? Where did you say Jesus was? I don't see it in the Old Testament. Yeah, 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 but you don't understand. We're not supposed to take the Old Testament. According to who? Catholicism. That's right. Let's go on now to the fact that I down on the scriptures a little bit where it says, Thou shalt go on down about the Sabbath. And it's going to be in Exodus 20, Josh. If you click on that first one, it'll take you. 20 and 3. It'll take you to the rest of commandments. That's not the right one. Turk, yeah, Exodus. Yeah, there you go. I want you to look at this. Now I want to set some things straight. He says in verse 6 that he will show mercy upon thousands who love me and keep my commandments. You and I are required to keep the commandments. And you threw out the ones you didn't like. What do you mean? How about verse 8? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath day was Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And you believed your preacher just like I did and kept Sunday as your day of worship. Oh my, were we ever so deceived. Keep that scripture in your mind. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. I've already established you cannot have any other gods before you. Therefore, Jesus is not a God. He never was a God. And if you go by your own New Testament, he never said he was God. That's right. So let's just go by that thought a moment. Now, I want us to go over and to the Council of Laodicea, I believe is the first one, and then the Council of Trent. You can take your liberty and look these up on your own. We just Googled them. In the Council of Laodicea, they established, I want you to look at the year, 363 to 374 was the time they met in the assembly. Josh, take me down to the major concerns of what was discussed in the, in the, there you go. Everyone pay very close attention to ver canon number 29. Canon number 29. Outlawing the Sabbath, Saturday, and encourage the rest on Sunday. The ecumenical council that took place in the council of Laodicea took God out of your life. And your preachers never did the research and followed. And so did I at one point until I found out we weren't getting where we needed to be in God. And I said, as for me, I can't follow the rest of the crowd. So as Josh has blown this up, let's take a little bit closer look at this. If you go into the Laodicean council and you go out to canon number 29, it will tell you that they wanted to eliminate the presence and knowledge and connection with the Jewish people. If you believe that your Jesus is God, then tell me why Jesus, when he was here, didn't change it to Sunday. Sure. You want to say it's because he resurrected on Sunday. No. The point was that the ecumenical council under the leadership of Constantine had an agenda and that was to silence the people who would believe in God and lead them down another road. You and I didn't know that. It has come up in recent, I would say not recent years, but in the years gone by where people have been able to research a far greater depth of what actually happened. So they wanted the Sabbath done away with. When God said what on that other page, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. He set that into place from the beginning of time. And you, who wants to love everybody to God so that you can increase your coffers for your preacher gets more money. Did you hear me? You're paying him to lie to you. Paying him constantly to lie to you. You accepted that doctrine. Not only the doctrine of listening to about these holidays, calling them holy because you changed them. In the ecumenical councils and in history records, they changed the names that were originally pagan of other deities to what would conform to you and this generation. That's right. But those before you, right. that's what they did. Wow. This was a sinister plot from the beginning. It said, thou shalt keep that day. Remember it. He set it into place. And he said, and you will keep it. But the covenant, think about this. And I don't think I prepared to pull this up. Stacey, you might have to work to find it quickly. The perpetual covenant for eternity is if you keep the Sabbath that you're his. The perpetual forever covenant is if you keep the Sabbath and you don't. 
So when all of you demons come up in that Facebook and attack me, I'm thinking, praise God. That's right. Hallelujah. They didn't count me as my, one of them. I'm not. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But he says, my perpetual covenant is that you keep my Sabbath and you get up and you go to church with all your fine attire and you play your little supposedly God's moving business. And he's not. Don't you see? You've been deceived. You've been tricked. You've been played. I don't know if they're going to find it. Yes. Okay, I was going to say. Give us one second. Okay, the guys are pulling this up for me. I've got a tremendous team behind the cameras that I pop up and tell them, I want such and such, and they go to work. Julian, what can you add while they're getting that together? I hope you understand what we're trying to do here. We're trying to bring you back to God. You've been deceived. Just like we were deceived at one point. The same. We're not here throwing stones because we were at, we're at one point where you are today. Yes. But we're telling you there's a better way. God's way. And we're trying to bring you to that road. We're trying to get you from the road you're in, the road to perdition. We're trying to bring you back to God. That's what we're trying to do here. And I hope you understand that. Because you've been deceived. And you're still deceived. Like I said the other day, when I read that comment that somebody was, they got mad what you said about posted about Jeff Arnold, and he was mad about it, yet he's practicing sorcery, witchcraft, and you get mad about it? Did I say something? Gets mad about it. You get mad about it? She said something about it? Do you not understand where your mind is at? Do you understand the case you're in? If you don't see that, then you're way far gone. But we're trying to get you for right from that. We try to get you back to God where he wants you. Now they pulled it up and it was also in Exodus 31, 16. So would you please read it for me? Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. And this was not for the children of Israel only. That's right. So when you say it's for the Jewish people, then are you saying you don't want to be a part of God's kingdom? That's right. That you have no interest? I'm not saying that the Jewish is 100% right on their perspective of things. But I am saying this is what he says. This is my perpetual covenant. Going to 17, please read it. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Oh, just until the people come along and say Sunday's the day of worship. Forever. Forever. Forever? Well, isn't that, how is that loving somebody to God? Well, what you're telling them is you don't care whether they're blessed and honored of God or their families. So you are promoting that same witchcraft that the preacher is promoting. Isn't that what you're doing? If the scripture that you refuse to see when I'm pointing it out to you, and so graciously my team has got it up on the screen, I'm reading it right off the same screen you are. We're showing you that we must keep this. So I want you to go and read 17 again. Had we read it? Let's read it again. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Forever and ever and ever, or until 2020. Forever. Oh, till 2022. Besides God's merciful, and he'll forget us and forgive us. He'll forget us, right. Okay. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. This is the day that God has set aside for us to acknowledge him and appreciate him and glorify him. This is the day. And according to scripture, it's from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And we adapt as the calendar changes, as the times and season change. Our guys now have to be in their homes by the Sabbath beginning till the Sabbath end. Now I want to bring this up because I don't think I did. I'm looking over at my team. Did we bring this in up yet? Okay. The biblical Sabbath. Julian, why don't you share that with him? Sabbath is first mentioned in Genesis, in the Genesis creation narrative, where the seventh day is set aside as a day of rest and, and made holy by God. Observation of members of the Sabbath is one of the Ten Commandments, the fourth in the original Jewish. The Eastern Orthodox 
and most Protestant traditions, the third in the Roman Catholic and Lutheran. What they're saying, the number system for the Ten Commandments was always changing because of where they put it in the book. It was set into place by God. And you have your service on Sunday. You know, I remember when my mother was alive and, and I started having church on Saturday when I found out the truth that I had been lied to. And I immediately stood up before my congregation and told them that I had led them astray. I asked them to forgive me and I took the risk. I didn't care if I emptied out the church as long as I had God. That's right. I asked their forgiveness and I said, from this day forward, we will keep the commandments of God. And Sunday is not the day that God chose. I set the church on a path that was biblically correct. And that day, God's presence filled the house. Right. And I remember saying, so that's what we were missing? We didn't. I was just in tears as everybody was on their face, weeping before God. I was willing to take responsibility for not having taught it for the years that I had been in that pulpit. Not having observed it for the years I attended other churches. And when I came to those realizations, I stepped completely away from any church that acknowledged Sunday as their day of worship. I was done. I would not be involved in that. Couldn't do it anymore. You see, when he said no other gods, not to mention the name of another God. You don't have to believe me. I don't worry about that. My message is to get across to you what you're supposed to know. In this particular scripture, or this particular statement, it's in Wikipedia. But if you go to the New Covenant, which is a Catholic, Catholic. Um, is it dictionary? Yeah. Encyclopedia? Mm -hmm. That's where you will see a breakdown of those canons. And this was in the Church of Laodicea, the Council of Laodicea. Or they call it the Snod. It depends on how you look it up. It has to do with, anyway, Laodicea, the 4th century. Years and years after your Christ was crucified years but if you read your new testament and you read just the words of jesus he tells you he didn't come to change a thing in the law but you see when you get into the books of paul who never knew jesus but was a roman soldier in allegiance to constantine and worshiped the god sol invictus he incorporated that teaching in there so that the women would remain silent, the men would have to be governed because you see the Roman, the Roman, the Roman Empire had to be great. So Paul was an instrument of hell and you all swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. Now I'm not going into how the history of that happened today. I'm trying to wake you up to some facts. Those of you who are going to serve God will do it. And those of you don't, go on your way. Since you're talking about that, I want to bring this up. Right here. Okay. It says teachings of Paul or Saint Paul. Paul never met Jesus. He claimed his authority from revelation revelation by Jesus. He briefly met Saint Peter and James, but otherwise appeared to have little contact with the apostles. Now listen to this. Many of his views conflicted with those of the apostles. How could they conflict with the apostles when they would walk with him? Right. If they walk with Jesus, how could Paul's writings or thoughts Conflict with theirs. Right. right. They, they can't. They can't. That was another doctrine. If it's of God, how can it conflict? You see, what you did was these men who were wicked, corrupt, polluted, and had alternative agenda, in, agendas went into these councils, starting with the Council of Nicaea, and started conversing and trying to persuade the masses to go under their teaching, which was aligned with Sol Invictus. Also, Mithra, which interchanged. They all believed in a virgin birth. They always be all believed in the same risen Savior, so forth. They did that by design to, sh to silence the Jewish. You never see in those four sections of the Bible that you see anything written about Jesus. And that's the only place that anything is written. He never says he was God. To do that would bring him immediate stoning because he was taught under the Jewish law. What you say is true. You were lied to just like I was. Now we're going to interject this here because I hope you get this and it really sticks in your head because you believe the Catholic Church when they change the Sabbath day. You said they were a harlot church, not of God. But you refuse that God 
wrote himself with his finger on the tablets, you refused that. With Chris, with his finger, he wrote it. Yes. And you take the Catholic Church, changing all the Sabbath. And you follow the Catholic Church that you say is the harlot church and not of God. Aren't you a part of them? They boast of that. They boast that they didn't have you come out of them. They boast that you're deceived. They do that. Hello? But yet God himself, even showing his power in the service, you're sitting there making your judgment of opinion. You're bold enough to do that? Or can I just say stupid enough? Because there's no boldness to it. It's just out and out possessed. Right. You would take the writings of God and discard them. That's right. And then yet, if you look at what you declare Jesus is God, he never said he was. When I did the video, Jesus is not God. And I have no idea why when we share that, it comes up completely different title. Because that is not on the YouTube. It comes up, Jesus is not Bible, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not Bible, but that's not what this... That's not what the video was about. It's Jesus is not God. Giving you scripture and proof where with Jesus' own words, he made these statements. So even if you say, well, I believe in Jesus, I'm going to die believing in Jesus. Well, take his word if that's what you believe. But then when you repent and find out that he was not God, perhaps you'll understand why David K. Bernard and all the other Bible scholars cannot tell you how and when Jesus became God, that it's a mystery. Remove from the equation the existence of Jesus and find out that the mystery is no longer there. That's right. We don't have to ask who he was praying to in the garden. We won't have to ask who he was talking to in temptation because he's not there. He is there and always has been there. You said, I don't want to follow the Old Testament because God of the Old Testament is harsh, cruel, and mean. You just don't know him. That's right. If he was that way, then why did he send me to give this information to you if he did not love you? That's right. And why well, Ezekiel <laughs> chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 18, and guys, throw it up there. I know it's not on my list of scriptures, but that's okay. You know me. In Ezekiel chapter 18, when he said he would forgive you when you repent. I read this a few weeks ago, and I read it in the NTL, the New Living Translation. And let me explain something to you. We go back and forth to the scriptures because we want to find out which one reads best to this generation, not which one meets my agenda. It's because this generation has a comprehension problem, and so do most people. So... I'm going to take a little bit of a break and sit back. And Julian, I want you and Stacy, Stacy, read this to it. And Julian's going to expound on it. It's all yours, Julian. Yes, starting with verse one. Yes, please. Ezekiel 18 and one. Then another message came to me from the Lord. Who, who gave it? The Lord. The Lord. Okay, everyone under the listening of my voice, you get this Ezekiel chapter 18, and this, along with the commandments, is your direction to God, not Acts 2.38. Go ahead. Why do you quote this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, but their children's mouths puckered at the taste. As surely as I live, said the sovereign Lord, you will not quote this proverb anymore in Israel. <laughs> For all people are mine to judge, both parents and children alike. Who who judges him? He does. He judges all people, but he said he's a sovereign. Sovereign means one and only, one and only Lord. That's right. Go ahead. And this is my rule. This, the person who sins is the one who will die. Suppose a certain man is righteous and does what is just and right. He does not feast in the mountains before Israel idols or worship them. He does not commit adultery or have intercourse with a woman during her menstrual period. He is merciful. He is a merciful creditor, not keeping the items given as security by poor debtors. He does not rob the poor, but instead gives food to the hungry and provides clothes for the needy. He grants loans without interest, stay away from injustice, is honest and fair when judging others and faithfully obeys my decrees and regulations. Anyone who does these things will is just and will surely live, and says the Sovereign Lord. 
But suppose that man has a son who grows up to be a robber or a murderer and refuses to do what is right. And that son does all the evil things his father would never do. He worships idols on the mountain and commits adultery, oppresses the poor and helpless, steals from debtors by refusing to let them redeem their security worship, worships idols, commits detestable sin. Now, do, they, do they do that right now? They, do that. they worship idols? They do. I say, people say, but you don't know what I spent on my Christmas stuff. Really? So why don't you just burn it? That's where it belongs. Destroy it. <laughs> But you don't understand what I said in the presence. Go get the money back. Unwrap them and give them to somebody in your family that you were going to give them to. And then why do that? You spent outrageously for what? To honor a person that did what? That was selfish? Didn't care about God? That you promoted? We're doing, we're seeing this. Right. Okay. See, I think you me. scooted down one and I'm telling Julian to do it and I keep interjecting. I, I Sorry, Julian. I'm trying to catch. <laughs> Because I had recent back surgery, uh, I've been in service now since nine o'clock. So if I'm trying to sit back and try to get my pace, understand my body's doing better. So go for it, Julian. I'll try to refrain from input. Or if I re-input Josh, don't put that on me sitting back in this chair. <laughs> and lends money at excess interest. Should such a person, sinful person, live? No, he must die and must take full blame. But suppose that simple person, in turn, has a son who sees his father wickedness and decides against that kind of life. This son refused to worship idols on the mountain, on the mountains, and does not commit adultery. He does not exploit the poor, but instead is fair to his debtors and does not rob them. He gives food to the hungry and provides clothes for the needy. <coughs> Basically, what it's saying here that we're responsible for our own actions, meaning that Jesus could not have died for me. Correct. Because I'm responsible for my own actions. Mm -hmm. Just like the father is not responsible for his son's actions or his daughter's actions, they're responsible for their own actions. So we are responsible. Nobody is going to die for us. We're Nobody died for us. We're, we're responsible. We're going to die or live according to God. We, but we're responsible for it, 100%. So when you want to say Jesus took away our sins, no, your repentance and asking for God's forgiveness is what takes away the sins. And you're going to see that in that entire chapter. So go ahead. But the father will die for his many sins, for being cruel, robbing pe people, and doing what is clearly wrong among his people. What, you ask, does the child pay for the parent's sin? No. no. For if the child does what is just and right and keeps my decree, the child will surely live. You hear what it said? If you do what is right. <clears throat> the person who sin is the one who will die. The child will not be punished for the sin, parent's sin, and the parent will not be punished for the child's sin. Righteous people will be rewarded for their own righteous behavior, and wicked will be punished for their own wickedness. But if the wicked people turn away from all their sins and begin to obey my decrees and do what is just and right, they will surely live and not die. See what that said? If the wicked people turn away, that's your repentance. When you make up your mind to do what was right before God, you turned away. It didn't say run down and find a body of water and get baptized to get your sins washed away. He didn't put that in there because there was no way available water in the desert. See, if I accept that Jesus died for me, for my sins, then I could do whatever I want. Just as long as I ask forgiveness. I can do whatever I want. It don't matter because he already paid for my sins. I don't, I don't have to do anything. All I, I can do whatever. I can be a heathen. I can do whatever. Else. It don't matter. But you see, we're responsible. What you're reading right here, you're responsible for your own actions. He's not going to die for you. He's not going to do this for me. I'm responsible for it. If I live under righteousness, God's going to reward me for that. If I live as a weak, if wicked person, he's going to reward me for it. But it's my responsibility. So he's telling you, do what is just and right. And what? They shall surely live and not die. Go on to 22. 
All their past sin will be forgotten. Hold it a minute. All their past sins. So I've got a brand new clean slate. That's right. Starting fresh. Do I have to keep repenting and repenting and repenting? No. I simply go to him with sincerity of heart and he will forgive me. That's right. Go ahead. And they will live because of the righteousness, the righteous things that have done. Do you think that I like to see wicked people die? Answer that in yourself. You Answer that in yourself. He would not have sent me to get to you, through to you if he wanted to see your destruction. He would have had no purpose to let me live 53, 53 years for him and then still be 67 years of age and still going strong. That's right. He wouldn't, have, there would have been no need. He would have just been thrilled with the fact you've done. But he loved you enough to send his messenger. This woman that loves him so much, that's what he loved you enough to do. And no, he didn't send me to die for you. He sent me to tell you the truth. Go ahead and show what the wicked people die. Of course not. I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. However, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things and act like other sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. All their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die for their sins. Yet you say the Lord isn't doing what's right. Listen to me, O people of Israel. I am not the one not doing what's right. Or is it, am I not the one not doing what's right? Or is it you? When righteous people turn from the righteous behavior and start doing sinful things, they will die for it. Yes, they will die because of their sinful deeds. And I want to bring out this. When you say, I love Jeff Arnold, how can you? He's wicked in the eyes of God. How dare you say that? God's telling you, if you love him enough, then contact him and say, get in the word. That's right. I'm telling him right now. I don't have a problem telling him or any other one. Stop being your self-righteous individual and come unto God and repent for your wickedness. Very simple, because he says he wants to forgive you. That's what he says. But I remember that you told him that God wanted to really use him. Yes, I did. But he didn't want that. Right. Because he already had cloud status, or whatever you call it. He rejected God. He rejected it because she told him God wants to use you in this day, his last day. God wants to do to our work for him. He, re he rejected it. And I told him to repent of his wickedness. I mean, I have a copy of the letter. So there's no way he can say he never received a letter from me if he was to go back and look at it. And he would have received a book proving to him that he was involved in wickedness. He would have already received that. But he turned a deaf ear. And you say, I love Jeff Arnold. Well, I loved him enough to send him the truth. Now I stand against him for not honoring my God. That's right. Pretty simple. So what are you for and what are you against? Are you like they were when they came down from that mountain? Is your focus on all of that? Mm -hmm. Is that camera back on me, Josh? Thank you. As I sit up in the chair, it's like you're going to have to watch her them up or down. So when Moses came down, I want you to understand something. They saw from the hand of Moses, God's power and representation right there. That's right. The demonstration of the elements. And when God got angry with them. He told them, he told Moses, go down, your people are sinning. He told Moses to do it. God sent a messenger in the form of Moses. When Moses got down there, he was enraged about the golden calf that had been erected, which represented Baal, which was heathenistic practice. They had taken their all and melted their gold and, and started dancing before this representation of a deity that is not right. And in Moses' rage, he threw the tablets of stone down. I wonder if in his heart he said, you're not worthy of God. You're not worthy. But he took upon him that raft and said, today, who is on the Lord's side? If you're on the Lord's side, stand here. If not, stand there. You're given that ultimatum today in the service. Who is on the Lord's side? That's right. Who's going to shake off that bondage of wickedness, the worship of false idols, 
of these holidays of going to church on Sunday. And I'm going to enter right here or say it. The reason that Sunday was made the day of worship was it was for the soul invictus. The S-U-N day, which was soul invictus. That was the day that he was worshipped. The Catholic knew it. Ecumenical councils knew it. But you were deceived by it. So when Moses asked that question, who's on the Lord's side? You've seen a division. You saw those that went over on that side. So when you're standing there and you're looking at your holiday Christmas tree and you look at it and you say, I'm teaching my children to believe in magic and witchcraft, but our pastor says it's okay. Isn't that the same of me saying who is on the Lord's side? Right. Take it down. Get rid of the garments and the paraphernalia that represents that holiday. People will ask me, do you celebrate the holidays? The answer is no, I don't. When they say, what are you doing for Christmas? I simply say, I don't celebrate it. That's right. I'm not ashamed to say I don't celebrate it. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I don't celebrate any of these unholy days. So who's on the Lord's side? I want to continue that because I want you guys to, where you're at, open up Ezekiel chapter 18 and think about it. In order to make it right, you repent and you walk out of that house of witchcraft. That's right. Go ahead and finish reading. <clears throat> when righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things, they will die for it. Yes, they will die because of their sinful deeds. And if the wicked people turn from their wickedness, obey the law, and do what is just and right, they will save their lives. They will live because they thought it over and decided to turn from their sins. Such people will not die. And yet the people of Israel keep saying, the Lord isn't doing what it's right. O people of Israel, is it you who are, it is you who are not doing what's right, not I. Therefore I will judge each of you. O people of Israel, according to your actions, say that the sovereign Lord, repent and turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you and find yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O people of Israel? I don't want you to die, said the sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. I don't think there's a very better way of clarifying than that set of scriptures. Right. You can't be afraid of what the rest of the world does. That's right. You have to stand for God and what he wants. Now, I know, guys and girls, we did not get everything covered, but I feel like we got the gist of what we were doing, and we're going to continue to teach you. You go ahead and let those demons rise up in you and attack me all you want. But if I were you, I wouldn't be that stupid. Uh, I don't take, uh, what should I say, cowardly acts. I've, I've said this before you, Julian. We know we're going to Israel to bring God's spirit to the country. And I told you at one time, I could see me standing up in the midst of all these false doctrines, right. just like Elijah, and declaring, hey, you call your God down, see what he does. When you're finished, I'll call upon mine and we'll see what he does. And I thought, I think there's going to be a spiritual showdown. That's right. And I do believe that. Because you see, I will not back down. You're better off if you're on Facebook to heed my warning earlier. I will not be reading your comments. They'll be posted what I have to say and moved on. Uh, you say what you want to say. Be sure and warn everybody not to listen to me. That just makes me feel great that I've succeeded in stirring up the devil in you. And that the thing he wants to do is silence me. It's not going to happen. I always said this. I don't know where I got my stubbornness from. But when it comes to serving God, my feet are set. And that is the only way I intend to walk. I'm not going to say share this because you're a coward. You'd be convicting yourself. I'm going to say for those who really want to know how to walk with God and serve him and have him alive in your life, then you're going to want to continue watching the classes that I teach, what Julie and I are showing you, and we're going to keep moving on. Thank you for your time. Julian, do you have anything you want to say in closing? It, it just came to my own why, but... You know, when you were talking about Moses, he gave him the ultimatum. 
you're on the Lord's side or not. But here's a parallel. On the Garden of Eden, here comes the snakes when after they've God had warned them not to partake of that fruit because they will surely die. But here comes the snake telling them, you should surely not die. Right. It's what the Catholic Church have done to you. You surely have you will surely not die if you don't follow his commandments. But you will. You will die the spiritual death. Hope you take that to heart. So do you want to be walking with God for eternity or condemned to hell? That's your choice. I made mine. Keep watching. You don't know when we're going to pop up and teach you more. Thank you.